Tibetans across Tibet have risen up and challenged one of the most powerful military dictatorships on earth. Tibetans have literally taken history into their own hands and changed it in front of our eyes. In response, the Chinese government is killing, imprisoning, and torturing thousands and thousands of Tibetans. And we've been hearing that in some areas of Tibet, almost every household has a family member that's either been detained or missing or killed. So right now, we have the responsibility to amplify the voices of the Tibetans inside who are risking everything. And we need to work harder than ever to send a clear message that until the occupation of Tibet ends, China will never be accepted by the rest of the world. The new generation of Tibetans waging this powerful, growing, non-cooperation movement. And on the other side, you have a declining empire that has lost the trust of its own people. The leaders have to worry constantly about endemic corruption, environmental disasters looming, and inequality. So of course, the Chinese empire, the Chinese government would be really lucky if they last for another 10 years. And that's not us who are saying. There's many Chinese experts, Chinese scholars, and Chinese leaders from within China. That's what they're saying. So naturally, the result of this equation is nothing but the freedom of Tibet. So a free Tibet is not only possible, it is not only probable, a free Tibet is inevitable. So, we are at base camp right now, and behind us, you can see the majestic mountain, the highest mountain in the world, uh, and it belongs to the Tibetan people. This is Tibet. I'm a Tibetan, and this is my land. If you look over there, you can see a couple of tents. Those are tents put up by the Chinese government getting ready for the expedition to carry the Olympic coach up to Mount Everest. This land doesn't belong to you. For the past 50 years, you have ruined this land. Blood is coming out of this land. The Tibetans have lived on this land for generations and generations. Si